John Davenport here from Fogarobly.com with another Let's Edit video. This week will be a little bit different. We're not actually going to edit a photograph. Um, and the main reason for that is we're going to be talking about the difference between Lightroom and Photoshop. And the main reason for that is because I'm going to be adding Photoshop tutorials and kind of just videos with Photoshop uh, to the channel in the future. And I figured the first thing we should do before I do that is talk about the big differences between Adobe Photoshop Lightroom and Adobe Photoshop. So there's three big differences that really come to mind. Um, there's a number of other ones, but there's three big ones that kind of uh, jump out at me when I first think of the two programs. Uh, the biggest and most uh, probably obvious one is that Lightroom actually has a library function built into it. So you can see here I'm in my Lightroom library and I have all of the folder hierarchy available to me uh, at just a click of a button and I can pick any photograph and whatever photograph I choose all I have to do is click on develop and I'll develop that photograph. If I jump into Photoshop, there is no library here. Uh, the library is actually on the computer. So if you do want to work in Photoshop and Lightroom, it's a good idea to kind of have a plan uh, with your library and kind of keep things consistent. So I went on the internet and kind of found a method that I think makes a lot of sense. I found this on Flurn and I'll put the video in the description below so you can um, kind of see where he uh, came up with the idea and how he uh, organized it in a little more detail. But basically, if I go to open, you can see here I have my pictures folder on my Mac. And in my pictures folder, I have my years that I've taken photos and each photograph each of these years is broken up into a date and a location. So that's how I've kind of started organizing my photos. Now, not everyone is going to have a specific date, like photos of my dog actually are all for the whole year. So any photos, photographs I take this year of Bella will probably end up in this folder. Anything I take, you know, just practicing around my house or things that are kind of just random will end up in this folder and then specific shoots will have their own date and location name. So that's kind of how I'm going about organizing photos. And then the idea that um, I got from Florin was to organize them in a four folder system. Now I'm not sure if I'm gonna actually need all four folders because I don't do a lot of professional work, but the idea behind this is that you have your capture folder and that includes everything from the shoot that you captured. Then you have your uh, selects folder. This is all the photographs that you worked on in Lightroom that you want to work on in Photoshop. So you save a TIFF file of that photo, you export that from Lightroom into this folder, and you have a selects folder, and those are photos that you would open then in Photoshop and edit. You have a master folder, which is your finalized edit, and then your output folder, which is going to be the photos for the web or print. So that's kind of how my organizational strategy works. And you kind of have to have that plan with Photoshop because you're using a folder structure on your hard drive to organize everything. And it's always good to have everything in the same place. So now if I jump into Lightroom's library, you can see here if I open up 2015, I have my folder for Bella, I have my folder here for the Blackstone River, I have my capture folders, I have my other folders as well. And it's really seamless now. Everything's kind of connected. I can work in Lightroom and Photoshop. I have a place for all my photos. But it's important to know that Lightroom and Photoshop are very different in that way. Now the next big thing that really differs between Lightroom and Photoshop is the unlimited undo or basically the non-destructive editing that Lightroom has. So for example, if I jump back over here to Lightroom, I can do any number of edits. So this photograph has already been edited. Um, and if I jump into my develop module and I come over here to the left hand side and click on history, you can see there's quite a bit of history here. Quite a bit of things were done to this photograph. Now, 
in Photoshop, you still have a history uh, tab. Let's see if I can bring that up here. So I have a history tab. Let me open up a photo here. Let's just open up um, any old photo, really. What do we have for, I think we have, um, yeah, we can open up this one here. Oh, it's the same photograph, so that's great. So you can see here, I have opened up a photograph. That's one thing that I've done. If I grab a paintbrush and I paint, that's another one, then another one, then another one, and another one. I can't undo more than 50, that's what I've set this to, and you can set how many you want in the Preferences tab here. So if you go to Performance, you can set your history states. I have it set to 50. The more that you have, the more resources that will take, so you don't want to set it too high because then your computer might get bogged down. But the point is that you really have to be careful because you can't undo more than 50 times. So if you're working on a background layer and you're doing all sorts of crazy stuff to it and you actually want to change something, um, you are really out of luck if you uh, go over that limit. So that's something to be very careful of. And that brings up the third major difference between Photoshop and Lightroom, and that is using layers. So Lightroom does not have any layer capability to it, um, which makes it a little more simple to use because they have this unlimited undo thing, so you don't have to keep track of your different layers, but then you also kind of lose some of the power that layers has on it. Uh, one of the big things is compositing, so you can change a sky or you can add people to a photograph, you can change faces and all sorts of other things, but layers are even more than just that. You can use adjustment layers, so you can do curves to only specific areas of your photograph, and then you have masking tools and everything. So Photoshop gets um, really, really powerful when you start working with layers and adjustment masks and adjustment layers and everything like that. So um, those are kind of just the three major differences. Uh, like I said, we're not going to edit anything because I didn't want this video to be a half hour, 40 minutes long uh, between editing and this whole talking. But I did want to kind of share these differences so that when I do jump into Photoshop in the next video, you'll kind of understand at least the, a few major differences between the two programs. And, uh, and then we'll go from there. So um, anyway, I hope you learned something today. If you did, uh, please like the video and share it. You know, the more people that see these videos, the, the more... Uh, you know, the more I'm likely to continue doing them, I guess you can say. Uh, so anyway, uh, I'll see you again soon. And like I said, I'm more motivated now than I've ever been, uh, ever since I kind of wiped out my entire subscriber base on YouTube. So um, yeah, so I'll be um, hopefully doing at least a video a week. I'm going to try and do more than that, but hopefully at least one video a week from this point forward. So stay tuned for that. Bye.